Jerusalem. So this morning we're continuing our series and uh, we're sort of really almost sort of coming back to basics and talking about what it actually means to be a Christian, what it means to, to follow God. Um, and uh, we've been talking about the fact that to, when you become a Christian, you are a new creation. Uh, and we were saying sort of the old has gone and, uh, and the new has come. And uh, so this morning we are continuing that theme and we are looking at the fact that as Christians we have a new identity. Um, and uh, we're looking this morning um, about the fact that within that new identity we have security. So this morning we are looking at the subject of security um, in our um, uh, relationship with God and uh, we're looking at security and uh, you know what it means to have security as a Christian. And I've been really excited about this series and, uh, and I'm encouraged um, about how we're just sort of going back to basics and learning what it means to be um, a Christian. You know, I remember um, growing up and uh, I remember when we used to go on holidays, um, my, my brother, who was a couple of years younger than me, um, he, and hopefully he's not listening to this recording, but he used to have this blanket um, and we couldn't go anywhere without that blanket. Um, and uh, it, was, it, was his blan it was a security blanket. You know, if we were going on holiday on a long journey, um, um, he would make sure that he had that blanket with him. It was a pink blanket, it was tattered um, at the edges, but it was the most important thing that we would pack in a car before we went off. And if we sort of got halfway to wherever we were going and we didn't have the uh, March security blanket, we'd have to turn around and go back. And uh, maybe in your family, some of your children have got sort of a, you know, something security, it might be a teddy um, or, or, or a blanket or something, and you just need it with them because it gives them that sense of uh, security. Um, there were two things that we used to always make sure that we packed when we went on holiday. One was Mark's security blanket, and my dad, for some reason, always wanted to make sure we had some smelling salts in the car as well, in case anyone fainted. And those are the two things that we go back for, the security blanket and the smelling salts. In a way, the smelling salts of my dad, even though he was an adult, that was his a security blanket. Yeah, Because even as adults, we crave security, don't we? We crave security in life. Um, you know, we, we, want, we want security in our lives. We, we want security in our homes. Yeah, we want to make sure that our homes are secure. Um, I, before I was a pastor, I was a police officer. And so security was sort of an important thing uh, within the police force. And we'll come on to that a little bit later on. But security is a state of being free from danger or threat. You know, we, we want to be safe. We want to be free from danger or threat. That's what it means to have security. And it's good to have peace of mind, isn't it? And, and to feel secure about our families, uh, to feel secure about our workplace, to feel secure about our lives, our relationships. Security is really important. And uh, as I say, we often look at our homes and make them as secure as possible. But in all of our efforts for security, there's no guarantees, is there? You know, there's no guarantees in all our efforts for security. You know, as a police officer, I remember a family who lived in East London, down in Wapping, and uh, they, they had a nice car, and they left their car outside their house, and they left their, their keys in it. And, and someone came along and stole the car whilst they were sort of in the house. And so they came out of the house, and the car had gone. And uh, so they called the police and all of that sort of stuff. The next day, the car was returned to them. And the keys were put through the letterbox and there was a note, a letter saying, really sorry that we took your car, we needed it for an emergency. Please, here is a gift of theatre tickets for this particular day to go and enjoy the theatre as a family. <laughs> and they're nice, wasn't it? <laughs> and so off they went about a week later for this night at the, uh, the theatre and had a lovely evening um, at the expense of these people that had taken their car. And uh, when they came home, yeah. their house had been broken into <laughs> and everything had been taken in. True story. You know, they had a secure house, but there's no guarantee about security. 
You know, in the, on the London Underground, they decided that there were, there were lots of um, pickpockets working um, in the centre of London. And, and so what they did is they wanted to make people aware that pickpockets were working in a particular area. And so on the underground, they put big, big posters up saying pickpockets are working in this area. So that they could try and prevent pickpocketing stealing happening on the underground. The big poster went up. And then they looked at the statistics for uh, pickpocketing in that particular area. And instead of going down, the statistics went up. More people were having their wallets or purses stolen on that particular underground station because of this poster that had gone up. Why? Because as people walked past, walked past and saw the, the, the poster, what do you do? Then do you check where your wallet is and where your purse is? Well, the pickpocket stood there under the poster to watch where people were sort of putting their hands. And well, okay, that's where, the, that's where the wallet is. That's my opportunity. Now, there is no guarantee for security. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, which is a book of wisdom, Wisdom about life. In Proverbs 3, verse 26, it says this. For the Lord is your security. God is your security. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. For the Lord is your security. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. In other words, if we are looking for security in life, if we are looking to have peace of mind about our own lives, about our families, about our children, then security is found in knowing God. In life, we, we, we want that security. And the best place we can find that is in a relationship with God. You know, some people would say, no, 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 Peter, you know, if you've got money, you've got security. Or they'd say, Peter, no, no, if you've got good friends, you've got security. If you've got a good family around you, you've got security. If you've got a good home and uh, you, know, you live in the Western world, then you've got security. All of those things um, are, are important, but nothing replaces the security there is found in God. In the Bible, again, um, the Apostle Paul, who was a, a young leader, um, he wrote to um, a guy that was, was pastoring a church called Timothy. And he said, he said, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud, but not to trust in their money. Because money can go. Money can be lost or stolen or, or be sort of uh, um, whittled away. Money is unreliable. He goes on to say, their trust should be in God who richly gives all we need in life. All we need for our enjoyment. You know, God gives security. Security and peace of mind and peace um, is a gift from God. You know, when we talk about security, we, we often relate it with trust, don't we? Because if we trust someone, it brings a sense of security. If we trust God with our lives, if we trust God with our children, as Chris and Laura have done this morning, they're trusting Arabella to God. You know, trust brings security. Security flows out of trust. So whom do we trust with our lives? Do we trust God? Do we trust money? Do we trust ourselves? Who do we trust with our lives? In the Old Testament, which is sort of like the first half of the Bible that, that talks about the history of Israel, there was a prophet named Jeremiah. And, and, and Israel were being invaded by other nations. Israel was being invaded by um, uh, other nations around them. And the people of Israel would be were being taken into captivity. And uh, Je Jeremiah was sort of a, um, uh, he was called a prophet. He basically spoke to the leadership of Israel uh, and spoke to the people of Israel. And, and he said this, he said, you know, this is, what, this is what God says to you about the situation you're facing. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an, un 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 
in an in, 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 inhabited salty land. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and their confidence. And Jeremiah was saying to the people of Israel, come on, don't trust yourselves. This is beyond you. These are circumstances beyond your control. Don't trust in each other, but trust in God. It is God alone who brings hope and confidence. You know, Jeremiah points them to God. And friends, this morning I want to say to you that that's wisdom. It is wisdom to trust God because he is able to keep you. He is able to watch over you. And as we trust in God, so we put our security in him. We have confidence in the power of his love. And we trust that we are safe in his hands. And therefore we can commit our lives and we can surrender our plans to him. Because we know his plans are good for us. You know, if you are moving into a new home or you're setting up a business, you can, you can have a sort of a crime prevention survey where someone comes and looks at your home um, and, and looks at your, your, your business and will point out any weaknesses where people might be able to break in. Um, and so they give you a survey and they let you know where your security is strong and, and where maybe there are, are weaknesses. This morning I want to just review in these few moments that we have, uh, our security that's found in God. We've said that security is found in God. We've said that we can trust him. We've said that we can have confidence and hope. But let's just review that security and see the strengths there are in um, having our security in God. And I want to give you four, four important aspects to our security in God. And the first one is... Philippians 4 verse 19, I think we can put it on the screen, Philippians 4 verse 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Now one of our leaders here at Sawyer's Church a few years ago, he preached on this particular um, verse in the Bible um, in relation to our new building. And, uh, and what um, um, he was saying is that in regard to building our new facility at the top of Sawyer's Hall Lane, we can trust God to supply our needs. And friends, do you know that we have found that to be true? And we are now in the process of building that new building at the top of Sawyer's Hall Lane. And, and we have what we need to build that first phase of that building totally debt free. And we have trusted in this particular verse and we've proved that God supplies all of our needs. But this particular verse isn't just in regard to buildings, it's in regard to our lives as well. That actually God supplies all of our needs. And that's been my testimony. It's been my family's testimony. It's been so many people across this congregation's testimony that God supplies all of our needs. Notice it doesn't stay there all of our wants. Because sometimes our wants can be a little bit different, can't they? You know, we may say, oh, I love a nice holiday here or a nice car there. But God supplies all of our needs. We can be sure that God faithfully provides for us. He will never fail us or abandon us. He promises to give us life and life to the full. Hebrews 13 verse 5 says, Be satisfied with what you have, for God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. You know, we are protected by God. He supplies all of our needs. In Romans 8 verse 34, it says, Christ Jesus is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. In the police, just for um, a few years, I did protection and I protected some uh, members of parliament and uh, protected diplomats and, uh, um, and, and VIPs. One of the people I protected was Margaret Thatcher. Um, if, uh, if you remember Margaret Thatcher, I protected her for um, a couple of years. And uh, we would have to guard her place of work and we would have to guard her home. And no one was able to, to, to come in to her house without first coming through us. Um, and, and, and we were that sort of security for her. 
And uh, yeah, when she would go off to work, there would be um, um, sort of um, several police cars that would come and follow her to work and, and motorcyclists as well. And, and, and these police officers were armed and they would make sure that she got safely. Wherever Margaret Thatcher went, she had a team of security that would protect her. We used to laugh because um, obviously Margaret was married to Dennis Thatcher um, and uh, so she would go off in the mornings with like two police cars, four outriders, all with guns and whistles and you know the traffic was stopped and, and Margaret Thatcher would go with all of her protection and then Dennis with his briefcase would walk up the road all on his own <laughs> and go off to her. They used to feel sorry for him that his wife had all of his protection and poor old Dennis had no one. But anyway, that was the way it was. But, but you know, no one was able to get to her unless they went through us. You know, we were that sort of close protection. And, and this Bible verse here is saying that if you're a Christian, no one, you know, the evil and the devil can't get to you because God is watching over you. God is protecting you. God, uh, it says here, that Jesus is, is praying for you. He's interceding for you at the right hand of God. You know, he supplies all of our needs. A second point is that the Lord gives us security from evil and calamity. You know, many of us know the Lord's prayer, don't we? And, uh, and in the Lord's Prayer, we pray you know, to, for God to deliver us from evil. You know, we actually, in the message translation that we can put up on the screen, um, it says this, keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You are in charge. You can do anything you want. You're a blazing beauty. Yes, yes, yes. You know, this is a prayer that Jesus tells us to pray. He tells us to say to God, keep us safe from evil. Deliver us. From evil. And I want to put it to you this morning that if God is saying, Yo, you need to pray this prayer, then God will answer that prayer and protect us. God wouldn't ask us to pray a prayer that wasn't going to be answered. We're taught to pray according to God's will. So it's God's will that we as his children are safe from evil and calamity. There is a wonderful psalm, Psalm 91, uh, in the Old Testament, and talks about. The highest security of a Christian. That God watches over you, protecting you. And the first couple of verses say, Those who dwell, those who live in the shelter of the Most High, will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord, for he alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust in him. And then it goes on to talk about his protection over us. As Christians, but that high security that we have in God, you know, is, is according to the place that we live. If we live under His protection, if we live under the shadow of His wing, if we follow Him and give our lives to Him and surrender to Him, as Laura um, and Chris said to us a little bit earlier, if we put our lives in His hands, He will watch over us, He will protect us, and so you know, He, He, He. He provides for all of our needs. He keeps us secure from evil and calamity. And then thirdly, the Lord gives us security in our relationship with him. You see, when we become Christians and receive our new identity, we have the privilege of becoming God's children. The Bible says that we're adopted into his family. And uh, you know, we experience the unconditional love of our, of, as, of our perfect heavenly father and this relationship with God is permanent it's everlasting the Bible says that nothing nothing can separate us from the love of God nothing can separate us from the love of God and often when we're, when we're preaching when we're talking about what's in the Bible a lot of the Bible was written in Hebrew and we look at the literal Hebrew translation don't we and do you know what the, the literal Hebrew translation is for nothing? Nothing. nothing. <laughs> exactly. It says what it means. If the Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God, then that means nothing can separate us from the love of God. Hardship, loss, pain, loneliness, whatever it is, it can't separate you and me from the love of God. God loves us unconditionally 
and our relationship with him if we're a Christian is absolutely secure. We said, didn't we, a few weeks ago, we were talking about um, the disciples in the boat in the midst of the storm. And, um, and, and, and we were saying that they were safe because Jesus was in the boat with them. They didn't need to fear. And, uh, you know, there is nothing that could separate those disciples from the love of God because he was there in the boat with them. And I want to say to you this morning, if you're a Christian here this morning, your relationship with him is secure. You don't need to add anything else to that relationship. It is secure. If you've given your heart to God, if you said to God, I'm sorry for the sins and I'm sorry for the mistakes I've made. If you've asked God to become part of your life, then your relationship with God is absolutely secure. I'm reading a little bit about um, Martin Luther, who was the guy way back in the... Um, uh, um, uh, years ago in, in the 1500s who, who brought the Reformation, a guy called Martin Luther. And um, at that time, the church were, um, you know, you'd have to, if you gave money, then the church would grant you um, forgiveness of sins. That's what was going on way back at that time. And, 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 and preachers would go around and they, they would say, yeah, if you give money to the church or you give money to this building or you give money to, to, to these people, we can guarantee that God will forgive you of your sins. It was called indulgences. Um, and actually a lot of churches were built on those indulgences. You know, the, 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 they would go around and say, if you give, then, then, then you'll, be, you'll be forgiven for your sins. Actually, if you give a lot, then actually you'll be forgiven for sins that you haven't committed yet. And apparently there's a story um, of one of these preachers and, um, uh, and he was preaching out in the countryside and someone went up to him and said, here, here for, for, you know, here's 2,000 pounds um, to, to, towards you know, um, uh, the project that you're, you're asking for. So you know, therefore, um, I'll yeah, be forgiven for the sins I'm committing and that was fine. Um, and then apparently this preacher was on his way home and uh, this person that had taken these indulgences attacked him, nicked the money back and said, I'm forgiven because I gave it back. <laughs> but that's what was going on. The church, you know, people were saying, you know, you've got to add to your faith. You've got to do this in order to get um, forgiveness. And Martin Luther stood against this. And so then started the Reformation. Um, and um, this is what Martin Luther said. We can put it up onto the, the screen there. He said to, what he was saying to the church and to the people, uh, and he got this from the Bible, he said, Jesus did all that was necessary to bring us to heaven by his death on the cross. And we need only trust him. We cannot earn heaven by our acts because Jesus has already done that for us. In other words, the fact that Jesus died on the cross for us is enough. Our relationship with him is secure. It's not about how many times you pray or how often you go to church or how many times you help your neighbour or do this or do that. All of that is good stuff, but it doesn't save you. The thing that saves you is Jesus. He's already done it. And all we have to do is believe. All we have to do is accept. All we have to do is say, God, I'm sorry for the mistakes I've made. Come in and, and turn my life around. And when we do that, the Bible says that we are Christians and we have this wonderful security of God meeting our needs, this wonderful security of protection from evil, this wonderful security of our relationship with him <coughs> secure. And the last one, that we have the promise of eternal salvation. Did you know that nothing can snatch you from his hands? There is nothing worse than having something snatched from you. And God's promise here is that your eternal salvation is secure. God, if you're a Christian here this morning, God has given you eternal life. And life to the full. Yeah, we have so much to be thankful for. Our security is in God. I'm going to ask the worship team just to, to play just quietly in the background. And... Uh, yeah, I want to challenge you this morning. Maybe you're not a Christian here this morning. Maybe what I've said about security and salvation and forgiveness and new life, it's, it's perhaps foreign to you. You don't really sort of understand it, but you know that you need something. Well, I want to say to you this morning, you can become a Christian. Just like Laura said, she did the Alpha course and became a Christian. You too can become a Christian. 
Actually, you don't even have to do the Alpha course. It's a good thing to do, but you don't have to do it. Being a Christian is simply saying, God, I've messed up. God, I've done things my own way, and I've done things that I'm not proud of. And God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the mistakes, for the sins I've committed. And Lord, I, I realize that you paid the penalty for my sins by dying on the cross. You took my sins upon yourself. You took the punishment for my sins upon yourself. And God, I understand this morning I can be forgiven. I understand this morning that I can be a new creation, a, a, a blank sheet of paper. And Lord, that you can transform my life. And so Heavenly Father, I accept. I say sorry and I accept that you died for me. And I ask you to come and be part of my life. Friends, that's what it means to be a new creation. That's what it means to be a Christian. That's what it means to give your life to God. Maybe you're here this morning, you are a Christian, but you've become very fearful, very anxious. Well, I want to remind you this morning that your life is secure in Him. That He holds you in His hand. In Psalm 16 verse 8, and we read this in our pre-church prayer. It says, I've set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Christian here this morning, God is at your right hand. He's at the right hand of the Father praying for you. And he's at the right hand of you protecting you, watching over you. He is your high security. Trust him and know that you are secure in him. In a few moments, we're going to sing our next song. But before we do that, I've asked some people across the congregation just to declare the protection that they have in God. And I want you to see all the different verses in the Bible that talk about our security. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the reference for these particular verses. And then someone in our congregation has, has got what that verse means and he's going to stand up and, and declare it over our lives this morning so that we can understand the security that we have in God. So those that have got those verses, if you can just be ready, that would be fantastic. So all of these verses are in the Bible. They are God's word to us this morning and they talk about security. The first one is found in Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. I am free forever from condemnation. Praise God. The second one is Romans 8, verse 28. Romans 8, verse 31 to 34. Romans 8, verse 35 to 39. I cannot be separated from the love of God. Amen. We can't be separated from the love of God. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 21 to 22. I have been established and anointed and sealed by God. Fantastic, Jill. Fantastic. Established, anointed and sealed by God. Philippians 1, verse 6. God has begun a good work in us and it will be perfected. Philippians 3 verse 20. I am a citizen of heaven. Thank you, Angela. I am a citizen of heaven. Colossians 3 verse 3. I am hidden with Christ in God. Fantastic, Thomas. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. I love this one. I have not been given a spirit of death, but a spark, love, and a sound mind. Amen. Thanks so much, Arnold. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Hebrews 4, verse 16. I can find grace and mercy to help in time of need. Fantastic. God's favour in time of need. And the last one, 1 John 5, verse 18. Thanks, Olu. I am born of God, and the evil one 
cannot touch me. All of these declarations, God says over you this morning, your security, your security is found in him. I'm going to hand over to our worship team.